In this experiment, the performance characteristics of a Pelton wheel hydraulic turbine will be determined. The Pelton wheel hydraulic turbine is driven by a jet of water from a nozzle that strikes buckets on the wheel. The water jet causes the wheel to rotate, producing torque and power. The water itself is supplied by a pump inside a hydraulics bench. A brake system is used to measure the torque in the shaft. This system includes two spring balances connected by a cord that wraps around the shaft. The flow rate of the water jet is controlled by a spear valve. After the water leaves the turbine casing, it empties into the hydraulic bench where its volumetric flow rate can be measured. A pressure gauge is located near the spear valve and can be used to determine the head available to the fluid. Before starting the experiment, make sure all valves are closed. Then ensure there is no tension in the cord connecting the spring balances. Finally, ensure that water can flow into the drain freely. Close both the spear valve on the Pelton wheel turbine and the valve on the hydraulics bench. There should be no tension in the cord connecting the spring balances before starting the experiment. Adjust the screws at the top of the spring balances until the cord hangs loosely from the hooks. Note any offsets in the force readings. Remove the drain column from the drain and set it aside. The experiment first will be conducted at maximum flow rate with both valves fully opened. After the pressure reading is recorded, the turbine speed will be varied and the corresponding force readings recorded. Finally, the volumetric flow rate will be measured. Then the same procedure will be used at a lower flow rate. Turn on the pump in the hydraulics bench. Then fully open the bench's valve. Slowly open the spear valve until it is fully open. The resulting water jet will drive the Pelton wheel. Record the pressure reading from the pressure gauge. Increase the load on the shaft by increasing the tension on the spring balances. Adjust the screw above both spring balances until the rotational speed slows to approximately 750 RPM, as indicated by the handheld digital tachometer. The tachometer should be aimed at the path of the white square just off center of the hub. The tachometer reading will vary slightly in time, so estimate the average rotational speed over the course of a few seconds. Record both forces indicated on the spring balances. Reduce the rotational speed in increments of 100 RPM all the way down to 150 RPM by adjusting the screws on the spring balances. Record the forces on the spring balances at each speed. The volumetric flow rate is determined by plugging up the drain at the bottom of the bench with the drain column and observing the water line on the side of the bench. Make sure the rubber gasket is placed between the drain column and the drain. Start the timer when the water line reaches 0 liters and stop it when it reaches 25. The volumetric flow rate is 25 liters divided by the measured time. Once you have finished recording the flow rate, remove the drain column and set it aside. Reduce the flow rate by closing the spear valve completely and then reopening it only two turns. Release the tension in the cord connecting the spring balances and repeat the procedure at the reduced flow rate. Examine turbine performance at rotational speeds from approximately 1,050 RPM down to 150 RPM in increments of 100. When finished with this lab, close both valves and turn off the pump. Then, release both the pressure in the feed line and the tension in the spring balances. Finally, pour out the water from the drain column. Close the spear valve. Then, close the flow control valve on the hydraulics bench and turn off the pump.
Release the pressure in the feed line by briefly opening the spear valve. Adjust the screws at the top of the spring balances to release the tension. Finally, carefully pour the water out of the drain column and place it back into the drain.